I want to share with you 10 things that you didn't know about one of the greatest books ever written, Think and Grow Rich. Number one of part one. Dr. Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich in 1937 while he was writing all the fireside chats for FDR, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he wrote those great lines that you're familiar with, like, I have nothing to fear but fear itself. Confront your fears and make them disappear. Well, while working in the White House during the Depression, he only wanted to be paid $1 a year because he used the principles and philosophy to make himself rich. And you may or may not know, he already owned two Rolls Royces and a 600-acre farm. He was called by all his colleagues, Nap the Sap, because he was not taking his salary and they thought he was stupid. But he believed what he was doing was noble, important, meaningful, and he was trying to get people out of the tough times because as Bob Schuler says, tough times never last, but tough people do. Dr. Schuler stated that, and of course he used that line and studying Hill to build the great Crystal Cathedral, which I hope you visit if you ever come to Southern California. Number two, Bob Proctor is probably the greatest student of Think and Grow Rich ever, ever, ever. Bob Proctor and I owned two companies together, the 3% Club and the Million Dollar Forum. And Bob, coming out of poverty and being nobody from nowhere in Canada and having been served in the Navy and been a fireman and just didn't feel worthwhile, met a guy who told him, if you read this book and study it, it'll work. Every day for over 60 years, Bob faithfully read it. He owned it. He lived it. He practiced every concept. He went in one year from being earning 4000 and being 6000 in debt to earning 75000 and then two years later, a million dollars a year. And then it touched him at the depth of his soul, and he can't stop talking about it. You can see him on YouTube or go join his company, uh, Proctor Gallup Institute. But Bob was just amazed, and he stands literally on the shoulders of Dr. Hill and brings forth all the principles and all the philosophy of wealth and brings him into realization, materialization, because he and I thought everyone needs to step up their game and make a million or more a year. And that's one of the reasons that Bob and I created the 3% Club. We said, you've got to have MSIs, multiple sources of income. We couldn't find anyone that didn't have multiple sources of income. And then that, for me, merged into One Minute Millionaire with Bob Allen, you know, where we say you got to have multiple streams of income. Same thing. Point number three, I first heard of Think and Grow Rich when I was an undergraduate at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, Illinois. We had a mandatory attendance in a speaker series for a half hour, a weekly credit, where they literally punched your cards. If you didn't go, you didn't graduate. We had to listen to the great and inspiring speakers, leaders, professors, celebrities, military, and political thought leaders of all times. I loved it. I attended three more years with zero credit because it was real comprehensive education. And it was a phenomenal bonus to my ed edification and education and inspiration. I had a program leader of that whole thing was Professor Paul Hibbs, who is not only my great teacher, or one of them, but my great friend. And Dr. Hibbs let me host many of the superstars that came to Southern Illinois. And I toured them around the campus, brought them to meetings, and then they got to meet the university president, Dr. Delight Morris, or whoever they wanted, because we had the best faculty in the world. Because our president, Dr. Morris, I was a student leader, but he knew everybody that was getting fired for being 65 at Harvard, Wharton, Yale, Stanford. And then suddenly that changed everything and uh, made it work. And it was just exquisitely exciting to be at the right time in the right place and get to hear and meet all the giants of, of uh, thinking. And while attending, one of the people that came was W. Clement Stone. Now, Clement Stone was an insurance tycoon. He'd read, studied, applied Hill's principles during the Depression. Later on, he edited Success Magazine. He built a great company. He hired Napoleon Hill. He heard him at a talk at a Kiwanis Club, hired him to train all the salespeople during the Depression, and his company went from grossing $3 million a year to $160 million gross in one year. And then together, Dr. Hill and, and um, Clem, uh, Mr. Stone, wrote the success system that never fails. And Stone, as you may know, if you know are old enough, he was close friends with President Nixon, helped him to win. And he planned to have a million people at his birthday party. Unfortunately, he passed away before he was 100, so it didn't happen. But when Stone came to SIU, he was so rich, he gave three books in total encouragement of ownership to advance our life and our wealth and our riches and our thinking. 
it was the messages and the three books were Think and Grow Rich, The Success System That Never Fails, and I Dare You by William Danforth. Now, uh, that was I was more than a full-time student. You only needed to take uh, 15 hours. I was taking 18 hours a quarter. Student leader, seminar junkie. I had lots of friends, meetings to attend, but yet I read and absorbed Think and Grow Rich, but I read it superficially. I apprehended it, but I didn't comprehend it. Big difference here. You know, because a book isn't a book. A book is a book, and then there's words in a book, and then there's meaning in a book, and then there's the application of the meaning in the book. That means you comprehend it and can utilize it and make meaning of it. That's what I'm asking you to do. Apply the principles of philosophy. And when I started to do that at age 26, after I'd gone bankrupt, I earned my fortune and, and, and mastered it. And I planned it, you know, even when I was in school, I planned to reactivate it later. And of course I did. Point number four. After going bankrupt, meeting my motivational speaking coach, Chip Collins, in 1974, we became Think and Grow Rich junkies. We became Mastermind Alliance partners because that's what we'll talk about. And next thing about Andrew Carnegie creating a Mastermind Alliance and teaching it to Dr. Napoleon Hill. But Chip and I met every Friday afternoon on Long Island from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., had a little dinner and went aggressively after what each of us had done the previous week, what we planned for the next week, the next month, the next year. We fully accounted for all of our activities by going over everything. But most importantly, every week, for all those years we were together, we went over a chapter at a time of, of Think and Grow Rich. We fully apprehended it, comprehended it, and majestically said, how are we going to learn, use, and apply and get all the results? And they were mystical and magical in both of our lives. But the key line was, and I heard uh, the greatest salesman who outsold 1,500 to 1,800 insurance companies about that time, um, Joe Gandolfo, who wrote Ideas Are a Dime a Dozen, Men or Women Who Put Them in Practice and Exercise With Them Are Priceless. But Joe, in, down in Florida, had written, carved into his desk, anything the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Now, if you go over that a thousand times, branded in your brain, etching in the fabric of your being, you're going to be exceedingly profitable. And Chip and I said, look, value is starting my seminars at an irresistible under market price of $25 an hour. I sold four seminars over four weeks, prospecting, prospecting, presenting, closing, and good work habits. And I'll tell you that as a young professional speaker, I got paid full in advance from the general agent or manager in the life insurance business. And, and Chip taught me a great close. He said, do you want to cut the check or have somebody cut it? And I said, one of the first things we're going to talk about is think real rich. And they all just sat up like, how the heck did I know about that? Because that's their secret thing. All those guys that were making any money, all of them read Think and Grow Rich. It had sold like 100 million copies. And after launching me, Chip said, by the way, I'm going on vacation for two weeks with my kids and wife, Donna. And when I returned, he was blown away that I was fully booked because I did what Think and Grow Rich said. I had a high quantity of a high quality service with a positive mental attitude. And that's what Dr. Hill said gives you unlimited, unlimited, unlimited compensation. It's time to raise your fee, Chip said, from $25 to talk to $100 a talk, and blah, 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 blah. I was scared. But remember what Hill said, I bargained with life for a penny and life would pay no more no matter how I begged it evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is just a fair employer. She'll pay you what you ask. But once you have set the wages, why well, you must bear the task. Well, we raise it to two fifty dollars talk, five hundred dollars talk, and now it's thirty-five thousand dollars a talk domestically and seventy-five thousand international. And for that fee, I've been worked eighty times in China when it was capitalistically communistic, not Maoistically leninistic communistic like it is right now. Four years ago, that changed in a big way. And some of you are gonna be watching this in the future and see that differently. But when you got to ask for more, you got to repeat that poem I just said from Dr. Hill. I bargain with life for a penny because if you bargain with a penny, you'll get a penny. Life doesn't care what you ask, but you pay what you ask. And most people undervalue themselves. That's what Dr. Hill's teaching. Point number five, Agamandini, the author of The Greatest Salesman in the World, was living in New Hampshire as an alcoholic, divorced, down in his luck guy. He read, he had no money, went into the uh, library freezing and think real rich was laying on a table and he's oh I can't do anything so he read it it inspired him the introduction was written by the guy I just told you about W Clement Stone and Og applied for a job in Chicago got the offer he walked into freezing cold from New Hampshire to Chicago to get a commission only job well Og became super sober and a superstar salespeople 
person and he wrote and he succeeded. And Stone started reading this guy's writing and he hired him to be the new editor of Success Magazine behind Dr. Hill, who'd been the editor of Success Magazine. If you go back, you can see that. And if you read a lot of those books, you'll see it in, in future times I'll talk about it. And he became the chief writer and editor. Here's what I did though at night, because you got to go the extra mile. You got to go the extra mile, Hill always taught. So Og had been told, and now Clem's verifying that he's a great writer. So he'd been told by his mommy when he was five years old, you're going to be a great writer. I got up at 2 a.m. in the morning after working all day as an editor and wrote to 5 a.m., the greatest salesman in the world. If you haven't read it, you want to read it. But all of a sudden, Rich DeVos is in his dentist office. There's a copy of it. He reads it. He recommends it. It sold 5 million copies the first year. Well, Agmandino and I met and befriended each other here at the National Speakers Association. He endorsed one of my first early books. I always gave credit in his speeches to the wonders that happened directly to him because of Think and Grow Rich. It leveraged his life, his lifestyle, his career, his new marriage to Betty, and his future. Stay tuned for part two.